Hello and welcome to the news update on African Television, bringing you updates from our studio here in the nation's commercial capital, Lagos, Nigeria. And I am Deborah Eze. We begin from Nigeria, where Africonians Pakobak announced they entered into a global strategic partnership and joint venture, which we are now combining Africonians Bank industry leading financial fintech and next generation technology services with Sparkle Bank's world class strategy led trade financing and sustainable investment banking network. Africonia Sparkle Bank partnership is a powerful combination as in fulfillment of the United Nations Food, Security, Health, Hunger and Poverty Elevation SDG program for Africa. Africonia Bank Sparkle Bank, Swiss Bank International Organization, 5 billion US dollar agricultural grants commenced the signing with a new Dawn Foundation NGO headquartered in Abuja, which took place in the Africania Bank Nigeria office. The responsibility of the new Dawn Foundation is to promote the venture nationwide across Nigerian states, local government areas and wards, and drive 100 million Nigerians to the platform. In exchange, they and their members will receive agricultural grants from Africania Bank and Spaco Bank. Now we have connected with us in the studio, representative of the New Dawn Foundation Organization, which is a non-governmental organization. Thanks for joining me, Comrade Omuboya Ugo Kinsley and um, Comrade Becky James. It's good to have you in the studio. Um, I must say this is a, a very wonderful opportunity by Africania Bank and Sparkle Bank, now giving grant to small and medium farmers. What do you have to say about this opportunity? Well, uh, I feel very happy for this great opportunity from uh, Africonia Bank and uh, Sparkle Bank because um, it's a great honor to Nigerians and by the grace of God, um, I believe that Nigerians are going to benefit much. Agriculture, in the agricultural sector in Nigeria is a very important sector in Nigeria that most of us have been abandoned. You know, we overlook the issue of agriculture. So I am much happy to see Africonia Bank uh, attracting the attention of Sparkle Bank into uh, Nigeria and Africa at large, especially on agricultural sector. I feel much happy. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for that, Comrade Omboya. Now, was the process made easy? Because we hear about um, SDGs that give out this grant, or should we say government, governments that give out this grant, and at the end of the day, they promise so much opportunities and you don't get to see the money or either the farmers. So briefly tell me how the process was for you know, your organization getting through this grant. Yeah, um, the name of our organization is uh, New Dawn Humanitarian Foundation. Um, they, basically, the organization is um, uh, to partner with the uh, federal government in order to take care of the less privileged in the society, especially in the area of um, providing them with um, uh, basic needs and um, to make sure that um, the less privileged in the society are well taken care of because uh, in most cases um, they, are well, uh, they are neglected and um, most of them we find them in the rural area. And this is what um, New Dawn Humanitarian Foundation stand for, to go down to the rural community and to attend to whatever their needs are and uh, how to see that um, they can meet up with whatever that is going on in the urban rural setting. Okay, and what preparations will be made for farmers to get this grant and how many farmers are we looking at? Well, um, by the grace of God, we just signed the MOU. Um, even before signing the MOU, we have reached out to our coordinators, our representatives all over the country. And uh, on our own, we have mapped out strategies on how to reach these farmers. And by the grace of God, um, reaching the farmers is not an issue because we are close to them already. I want to assure you that um, by the grace of God, we are looking forward to have 50 million and above, as much we can be able to reach. I believe this is one of the things that Nigerians are looking forward to have. And uh, we are not calling them to bring in what they have. We are calling them to come and receive what we have for them to expand whatever they are doing in the agricultural sector. That's all. Thank you. 
Um, thank you so much. We really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us in the news today. Now, coming back to updates in Nigeria, Northern States Governors Forum and Kaduna based Islamic scholar Sheikh Hamad Gami yesterday joined the growing numbers of groups and individuals that have condemned last Thursday mob killing of Deborah Samuel, a student of the Sheikh Shagari College of Education, Sokoto, for alleged blasphemy against Prophet Muhammad. Chairman of the Forum and Governor of Plateau State, Simon Long, in a statement signed by his media aide, Macha Makut, said governors were concerned about the development, which they described as clearly an extrajudicial measure of addressing perceived infrastructure. The statement came as Catholic Archbishop of Abuja, Archdiocese, Most Reverend Ignatius K. Gamma, said Nigerians should not succumb to the marginalization of the evil ones by all in the pursuit of brotherhood and peaceful coexistence. Meanwhile, in a move to avert major religious riots over the killings of the 200 level students, Ms. Deborah Samuel, Governor Aminu Waziri Tambo yesterday declared a 24 hour curfew in Sokoto Metropolis. Moving on, Mali's junta announced Sunday that it will quit a West African anti jihadist force after it was blocked from assuming the presidency of the regional group. The country's departure from the G5 Sahel Security Force deepened its isolation after its neighbor hit it with sanctions in January over perceived foot dragging in restoring civilian rule. Mali's diplomatic relations with Western allies, including former colonial power France, have also deteriorated, especially over its recent reapproachment with Russia. Earlier this month, UN Chief Antonio Guterres said political instability and human rights violation in Mali and Burkina Faso were undermining the Sahel anti jihadist operation and called for returning power to civilians as soon as possible. And still on the African scene, a former Somali president voted out of power in 2017, has been re-elected to the country's top job after defeating the incumbent leader in a protracted contest decided by legislators in a third round of voting late Sunday. As in Sheikh Mohammed, who served as Somali president between 2012 and 2017, won the contest in the capital Mogadishu amid a security lockdown imposed by authorities to prevent deadly militant attack. The first round of voting was contested by 36 aspirants, four of whom proceeded to the second round. With no candidates winning at least two-thirds of the 328 ballots, voting then went into a third round where Mohammed won by a simple majority. Members of the upper and lower legislative chamber picked the president in secret balloting inside the tent in an airport hangar within the Elaine military camp, which is protected by African Union peacekeepers. Celebrating gunfire rang out in parts of Mogadishu as it became clear that Muhammad had defeated the man who replaced him five years ago. Away from the African scene onto the foreign scene, Sweden and Finland joining NATO would increase the security of the Baltic region, Estonia Foreign Minister Eva Maria Limet said. Limet hoped Sweden, Finland and Turkey would overcome differences and the Nordic states joining the alliance, adding that the Berlin meeting atmosphere was very supportive. Estonia appreciates NATO enforcing its presence in the Baltic region, but would like the allies to move from enhancing their presence to enhancing their defense. Now moving on, Saudi Arabia's King Salman bin Abdulaziz 86 left hospital on Sunday following a colonoscopy last week. The royal court said in a statement to the state media, Saudi TV ran a video clip showing the monarch walking slowly using a cane as a left King Faisal Specialist Hospital in the city of Jeddah, where he was admitted on the evening of May 7th. An entourage kept close and his son, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salam, the kingdom's de facto ruler, appeared in the clip and King Salman, the custody of Islam Olia sites, became ruler of the world top oil exporter in 2015 after spending more than two and a half years as a crown prince and deputy premier. In other words, bladder soldier in 2020 and had the battery of his heart peacekeeper replaced in March. Still on the foreign scene, leader Kim Jong-un has ordered North Korea military to stabilize distribution of COVID-19 medicines in the capital, Yongyang, in the battle on the country's first confirmed outbreak of the disease. 
Last week brought the North's first acknowledgement of an explosive outbreak, with experts warning it would wreak devastation in a country with limited medical supplies and no vaccine program. Drugs procured by the states were not reaching people in a timely and accurate way, Kim told an emergency Politburo meeting on Sunday before visiting pharmacists near the capital. Kim ordered immediate deployment of the powerful forces of the Hami Medical Corps to stabilize the supply of medicines in Yongyang City. Although authorities had ordered distribution of national reserves of medicine, pharmacists were not well equipped to perform their function smoothly, Kim added. We now head to the sports scene where six months after his initial appointment of Super Eagles manager in place of the sacked Gennar Roll, the Nigerian Football Federation NFF yesterday announced Ose Pesiro as the senior national team head coach. Pesiro was first announced as Super Eagles head coach in December 2021, but the decision was re reserved or reversed following the sports ministry intervention. The ministry reportedly did not agree with the NFF decision as it did not follow standard recruitment procedures. The ministry directed the NFF to open the window for more coaches to be auditioned for the position. He is expected to lead out the Super Eagles for the fourth time during the upcoming tour of the United States of America, during which the three-time African champions will slug it out with Mexico and Ecuador A-team impressive friendlies. The Eagles will tango with the L3 at the AT&T Stadium in Dallas, the state of Texas, on Saturday, May 28th, before flying to New Jersey to confront Ecuador at the Red Blue Arena in Arizona, Thursday, June 2nd. The NFF also announced that former Super Eagle forward Finney the Judge will now be the first assistant to Pesero, with Salisu Yusuf now to be the second assistant as well as head coach of the Chan and under-23 national team. And finally, Chelsea completed Women's Super League and FA Cup double as Sam Kerr struck twice to see off Manchester City 3 to in a 3 final at Wembley after extra time. The English champion Millie Bright crossed at the back post, but City equalised through Lauren Hemp just before the break. A long-range effort from Erin Cudbert restored Chelsea's lead early in the second half. However, there was late drama when Ailey Rasso brought City level again in the final minutes. Kaz also claimed the personal accolade as player of the year for an exceptional season and it was fitting the WSL's top scorer at the final stay in extra time in front of a record crowd of 49,000 for a women's FA Cup final. And that's all from us news updates at African Television. Do follow all our social media platforms on Join Team Pangram, Instagram and on Facebook in their respective order. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like and leave a comment for us on the comment section. Once again, I'm Deborah Eze. Many thanks for watching.